It was in 1976, after being inspired by bands like the Sex Pistols, Buzzcock, Slaughter and the Dogs, four young men decided to get together and start a band, originally named Warsaw. The band members were Ian Curtis, a multi-talented vocalist, lyric writer and occasional guitar player, Bernard Sumner, who handled both guitar and keyboard, Peter Hook on bass, and Stephen Morris on the drums. Initially they were moved by the early punk rock influences, but later morphed into to the post-punk movement of the late 1970s. They first gained notable exposure when Tony Wilson, a Manchester television personality, heard their self-released 1978 debut EP, An Ideal for the Living. He allowed them to produce an album, Unknown Pleasures, on his independent label, Factory Records, which drew some critical acclaim from the British media. They became Joy Division in January of 1978 after another popular band, the Warsaw Pack, released an album earlier in 1977. They didn't want to be confused with the Warsaw Pack. The name Joy Division comes from a book. It's the book about the life of a concentration camp of young women captured within the camp for the pleasure of the Nazi officers on leave. The corp of young women were called the Joy Division. This name and also album covers were set by critics to promote Nazism, but according to the Joy Division, their songs were meant to give the opposite meaning, and there were punk bands that used far more extreme Nazi symbolism that got no negative criticism from the media whatsoever. Initially, they were moved by early punk rock influences, but later morphed into the post-punk movement of the late 1970s. They first gained notable exposure when Tony Wilson, a man Manchester television personality heard their self-released 1978 debut EP, An Ideal for Living. He then allowed them to produce an album, Unknown Pleasures, on his independent label, Factory Records, which drew some critical acclaim from the British media. Things started looking up for Joy Division. They began getting more recognition in 1979. Ian Curtis appeared on the cover of New Musical Express, but circumstances weren't well with Ian Curtis. He was diagnosed with epilepsy. He began having seizures that were unpredictable and varied in occurrence at times and intensities. Ian Curtis was placed on medications. On February 14, 1979, a recording session recorded by John Peel with Joy Division earlier in January of 79 was placed on national radio in the UK and was later released as the first Peel session. This gave them the fame and recognition that they had needed. They got positive reviews from the song Transmission released in July of 1979. Sales weren't as good as they had hoped. They toured Europe in January of 1980. Their journey took them to Belgium, Holland, and Germany. Bootleggers recorded these appearances and made knockoffs of the performances. Ian Curtis continued to have difficulties due to his epilepsy and suffered extreme bouts of depression. He was having marriage problems and his relationship with Deborah, his wife, was in peril. Joy Division completed their album Closer and it was held and praised as a major success for the band. They planned an American tour and further discussions were planned with Warner Brothers. In July, Joy Division gave four concerts in London in the span of three days. These concerts took their toll on Ian Curtis, who suffered an epileptic seizure on stage. Ian took a drug overdose on April 7th, possibly an attempt at suicide, and maybe it was a cry for help as well. The stress caused from his illness and his combined marriage problems had Ian thinking about leaving the music business altogether. Joy Division played their last gig on May 2nd at Birmingham University. Fortunately, the concert was taped, and the only live performance performance of the song Ceremony was preserved. On May 18, 1980, Ian Curtis committed suicide by hanging himself. He was found at his home in Macclesfield. He hung himself in the kitchen after watching Strasbourg, a film by Werner Herzog, and listening to Iggy Pop.